We all like maps with a lot of data, especially data that helps us with our research or investigations, or visualizing a story. Over the next few minutes, I'm going to show you how you can create your own maps and how to get access to public sources of location data so that you can create customized maps on whatever you want. For example, you could create something like this map that you're seeing here on the screen, which is a map that I use for running and exploring the city of London. All of those points that you're seeing are public drinking fountains or public toilets. And why would I not use Google Maps? Because if we look at Google Maps, there are significantly less locations available for these points. Other examples include using publicly available data to create a map of locations of CCTV cameras in Munich, Germany, or gas wells in Queensland in Australia. So sit tight and get ready for another visual tutorial. Hi everyone, welcome back to this series on how to do open source investigations from home. I'm Ben and this is part 10. So let's get started. This is a water drinking fountain in the heart of London, right near St. Paul's Cathedral, which you might have seen in some of the other videos I've done on geolocation. Hey guys, I do a lot of running through London and especially on long runs, I need to find a place to fill up my water supply. But also places like toilets, for example. And when I look on Google Maps on London, there's not really that many places where I can fill up a, a water bottle. I see some scattered here and there, but not as many as I'd like and definitely not for toilets as well. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and created my own map using open source data to first of all identify all of the water sites in London as well as all of the public toilets because when you gotta go, you gotta go. And what I'm going to show you over the next few minutes is how you can use something really easy like Overpass to collect all of the data that's on OSM Maps and create your own customized map and layer that in Google Earth or in something easy like MapHub to use for yourself, your friends or the community that you're in. This is especially helpful if you're doing a lot of database investigations or research or anything like that where visualizing maps and data is crucial to your research. Most of the information you find on a map, for example, like Google Maps, is just lots of little data entry points. But Google Maps doesn't show us everything. It only shows us the things that maybe are necessary for applications or unnecessary or popular for travel and places to visit. There's a lot more information on a map than just what you'll find on Google Maps. And we can have a look at some more mapped data by using something called Overpass Turbo, which is a favorite site of mine to open up our field of vision when we're looking at data on maps. Overpass Turbo is really quite easy to use. You don't need to be a coder, but if you, if you can write anything, you can just do it in the left box over here. For those of you that want something simple and something that I always use a lot, it's just the wizard setting over here. So let's have a look, for example, and see what we can type in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run a search for drinking water in London because for me, that's something that I'm often looking for when I'm out on a long run or when I do long walks through London. Drinking water is actually classified as an amenity, uh, which is a category that OSM data uses or OpenStreetMap data uses. You can see here in the example on Overpass Turbo, they have highway or tourism. If you want to look at more of those, you can have a look through the OSM wiki and we can have a look at what's in the amenities category. You can see that there's 219 pages in amenities, which just goes to show you how much information is in OSM data. Be mindful that this is just one category, which is amenities. All of these things we can search for, police stations, polling stations, post boxes, wineries, workshops, you name it, they've probably got it. 
For us, we're going to look for water. So if I do a little control F on here, we have water points, water or drinking water. I'm going to keep this one simple as a little example and stick with drinking water for now. I can pop that into my query wizard. What I'm going to do is search for amenity, uh, which is the one for drinking water in London. I'm going to build and run that query. And on the left, you'll see the auto text that the wizard has popped in there for me, which is quite useful. I don't have to type out that stuff. It's just done it automatically, which is why I like to use the wizard setting. What's, what it's doing right now is processing that query. It'll pull that data and it'll map it out for us. So now we have all of the amenities, which are the drinking water points in the city of London. And we can see that there's quite a few, which is really helpful. What I like to do is to add a bit of color to them. Uh, so just for the purpose of this, to make sure that these are quite visible for everyone, I'm going to add a little text in here. And don't worry if you're feeling left behind with this. I'll also copy and paste the exact text that I use in the description below. I'm going to run this and let's see what these little points look like on my map. Cool. So here's my little data points that I have for all of the water drinking locations or fountains in the city of London. And this is really helpful for me because before while running, I just used to fill up my water wherever I could see a water fountain. But now I can actually use this map. The best thing about this overpass turbo is that it lets you export the data in a lot of different variables. So you could export it as a GeoJSON format, a GPX, raw OSM data. For the purpose of this one, and because we've been using Google Earth for the past few sessions, I'm going to download this as a KML. This simply exports the file as a KML that we can open up in our favorite little Google Earth. If you're stuck on how to upload a KML into Google Earth, all you need to do is drag the file and you can see I'm dragging the file and just drag it into a folder or wherever you have it on the left side under the places tab on the left in Google Earth here. And what that'll do is automatically load all of those pins right there. And we can even see that some of the names have come through and all of the other data will come through with these. So for example, if there's an image attached, Let's click on that image and see what happens. Cool, we've even got a little image of that one. Uh, we have some names. Sometimes they'll have opening times or things like that. We'll probably see a lot more information with the toilets as well. Because I wanna keep these pins colored, I might just change the style of these. That's also very easy to do. So if you wanna change the style of your pins in Google Earth, you can just right click on them and get info and you want to go to style and color and share the style of these pins. So I might choose a nice blue pin for these. So when I go for runs, the other thing I'm often looking for when I stop is a toilet as well. And I'm going to do the exact same search function again, but rather than looking for the amenity of drinking water, I'm going to look for toilets. So let's first of all see if we have, yep, we've got toilets over here. Tag, amenity, toilets. So I'm going to do the exact same search function here. And I'm going to look for amenity, toilets in London. I'm going to build that query. And you can see it does take a little bit of time to pull out the data, but eventually it does get it. Great. So now I have the location of all of the toilets in London. And you can see that actually, if we do this search in Google Maps, uh, so if I go uh, London public toilets, see how many pins pop up on my map when I search for public toilets in London. Now these might be ones with reviews, maybe some of the ones that I've pulled up on here are closed but there's definitely a lot more here than there are here. And you can start to get an understanding of how useful that might be if you're looking for things such as, for example, CCTV cameras, 
uh, bank machines, power lines, whatever you're sort of looking for, whether it be for geolocation or data or any form of research, you can see that you can get a lot more pins through this OSM data. So what I'm going to do is export these. Again, same process. And I'm gonna go back to my Google Earth and same process again, drag it into the folder and we can now see that we've got our toilets displayed. Uh, what I'm going to do is again, do the same thing to share that style and display them like so. So now we can see our toilets are here and this is actually quite useful because now I can identify specific spots that I might wanna stop at on my runs. For example, I might want to go to uh, Trafalgar Square here where we have toilets on the left uh, these are the opening times, Monday to Sunday, 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, and we also have a water site over here, and that's quite useful. Now, there's a number of ways to share this data with other people, which is something I really like doing, is sharing data with others. So, what I'm going to show you now is the benefit of using something like, for example, Map Hub. All you can do is import any of these. So you remember in the overpass where we had export, we can export as GeoJSON, GPX or KML, and you can import those same types of files. And you can separate those with either icons or colors, just like I've done for Google Earth. And this is a really useful way to share a map with a friend that might also be running through London and in need of regular toilet spots or regular water spots, uh, as well as any other sorts of research you're doing. So whether you're working in a team and you want to share a, a map with the entire team and keep that as a login only map, so keeping it private and secure, or whether you want to share it with the world with the research that you do on mapping things like arms destinations or geolocation, or things like that, uh, Map Hub is quite useful for that. If you're wondering why this might be useful to your research, well, the data points are not just only water drinking spots and public toilets in London. There is a lot of data when it comes to open street maps. For example, we could have a look at uh, man-made objects such as petroleum wells, or we could have a look at surveillance like CCTV cameras. So for example, using Overpass Turbo, here is the data points of CCTV cameras that I've just quickly collected. I've exported that to Google Earth here. So we have a nice little list of CCTV cameras. It's always good to verify your data sources as well uh, to make sure that these are actually correct. If we wanted to do that, for example, I could maybe drive up one of these streets using Google Street View and see if actually this is the case where there are CCTV cameras. And of course, if we have a look at this building here where there were lots of pins, we can see there's one there, one there, seems to be one on the end of that building and quite a few on the side of that building uh, along that car park there, all the way along that street as well. Other subjects could be, for example, power lines are very interesting to look at, bridges, um, different things if you're looking for geolocating a specific image with a power line in the background or a CCTV camera. Uh, but also if you're interested in doing uh, resource research, so petroleum wells in Australia. Here is one uh, that I've collected before, uh, which has a look at petroleum wells specifically in Queensland. And we can see uh, quite an amazing uh, data set of uh, geographical points or geodata as I like to call it of petroleum wells in Queensland um, and you can see a lot of these on the ground just from that sort of cut out there and the little well site where it would have been etched into the landscape. Maybe some of these pins are in locations where there are not currently wells, maybe there might be new ones or maybe some of these might be destroyed and so they're a little bit old. So again there are always limitations to geodata. It's good to recognize that, uh, but these things are, are quite useful for different fields and different industries in research. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. 
especially if you are a runner through London or any other city in the world and you want to make your own map of drinking spots and possible toilets or cafes even. Uh, but please do leave a comment and tell me if you've all used your own map for uh, something else or if you've created another data visualization using Map Hubs or Google Earth or anything like that. And please share this with uh, anyone else that might find this tutorial useful and that enjoys maps as much as you, me and the other people that watch this channel do.